All right, so in this video, we're going to go over the difference between a piggyback listing and an original listing, an original product listing. So a piggyback listing is basically the quickest and most simple way to list a product on Amazon. So if you're finding a product that already exists and you have a supplier that has that same product and you can mark it up to a price where you're including Amazon seller fees and any shipping or any other fees you have to add onto your supplier cost and you're still able to make a profit and you're able to compete with the first, second, third, or fourth lowest sellers price-wise. Now, a lot of other factors go into getting the buy box. Um, right now, Amazon's the only one in the buy box, as you can see right here. Shipped from and sold by Amazon. And there is no little mini buy boxes down here. But there is nine sellers total, as it says, nine new right here. So there's going to be nine different sellers. Okay, so you also have to make sure it's the right brand name, right size, right everything, right? So what we're looking at is Fever Tree 24 count ginger beer. All right, so I actually have a supplier here, Bangala, and I think I found a right here, which is six by four. So six four packs, which actually equals six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four. Right, so that's the right amount. It's the same thing, fever tree, and it's the ginger beer flavor. So it's the ginger beer. So we have right here for 30 bucks, and then um, shipping on something like this would probably be like 10 or 12 bucks so that'll take us up to about forty dollars and then after Amazon fees so if we sell this for let's say 50 we're gonna add about seven dollars fees right about 15 percent so that's gonna take us up to about 47 bucks now what I need to do is take a look at all the other sellers and see what they're selling it for and see if I can undercut or be competitive price wise so I'm gonna click here and view all the other sellers <clears throat> and I see that Amazon's 33 now when Amazon is here in stock and they're the lowest price I'll still list this item I'll still go for second or third or even fourth lowest price um, if, if, to, to list this item right if I see a seller that's got a really low price that won't stop me from actually listing the product because first of all not every supplier has the item unlimited in stock so Amazon eventually will run out of stock and when they do guess who's gonna be the next one to get sales one of these guys that are that are you know one of these next few guys are going to be the guys who get rotated next into the buy box or they're going to get the the majority of the sales right these guys over here for sixty dollars and fifty seven dollars they're not in the buy box range which is about a five percent on price now and that's actually the seller who's in the buy box there's other a lot of other factors that go into getting the buy box but um when Amazon goes out if these guys are in the price range to actually get put into the buy box that means fifty dollars is still buy box price range for this specific product so you would want to be within five percent of that now if you can come in and let's say undercut this guy or undercut this guy and be the second or third lowest price that'll also help you uh, increase your chances of getting sales on this product so I want to list this product let's say I want to list it at forty nine eighty right so all I'm gonna do is grab the ASIN right I'm gonna to go to my Amazon account I'm gonna to go to inventory click add a product I'm gonna put that a sin in right there and then I'm gonna make sure we're allowed to sell it and right here it says listing limitation so I'm gonna click that and it says we're allowed to sell it in new condition so I'm gonna click sell hours and to do a piggyback listing it's very simple right you're not creating the listing from scratch so it's really really easy also the sales ranks really crazy good on this 3000 um, so I, we're doing forty nine eighty. So I'm going to list this at forty nine dollars eighty cents. Going to go down here, and typically Bangala will always keep twenty five, at least on their website. It'll say twenty five in stock. Um, and generally, it'll ship out in two to four days. But I always put four just to be on the safe side. Right. So we got our price, our conditions new. We got our quantity and our handling time. That is the only few things you need to list a product piggyback on Amazon and you can also choose different templates if you have different templates set up in your shipping settings and um, that's a whole different thing but beyond that these are the only few things you need and then you click save and finish and you've essentially listed that product right pretty simple now I do have another product so now we're gonna look at doing a original listing so we're gonna do an original listing instead of a piggyback listing and we have this other supplier. They're actually a wholesale supplier as well, Sourced Universe. Um, this is actually, they're very, very dropship friendly. Now, if you go to the top of their website, 
any two items or more when you place an order with this code save five you're gonna save five percent and when you actually go to the very bottom of their website on the home page you'll be able to sign up as a reseller so if you come down here click sign up here and then a little form should there should be a form here on this page or it should at least pop up and reseller sign up so here you just enter your email address where you sell Amazon eBay your own website if it's anything outside of here you can obviously just choose whatever right choose your own website and then they're gonna ask for your business name if you don't have a registered business you can just give them your seller name so your Amazon seller name or your eBay seller name or your Shopify store name doesn't matter enter that here and once you submit it that this will send uh, Source Universe an email and they will email you back with a better discount specifically for resellers and it's 10% off any product site-wide so there's shipping um, it's three dollars economy shipping so they ship economy and they, it is local US so it's economy shipping I believe it's via DHL and then they also have expedited uh, which is fifteen dollars um, two to five days expedited shipping so they have two shipping methods so generally you're just gonna look at economy so when you're actually listing from this supplier you're gonna wanna go to your shipping settings on Amazon and you're going to want to set up a new shipping settings and add a new template and you're going to want to add economy and choose like five to ten days or six to ten days and then you're going to want to do add in an expedited and what i like to do is charge at least a dollar or two more than the supplier is going to charge me so if the economy shipping's three bucks and expedited is fifteen i'll charge well generally i will actually factor i'll always have at least one option for free shipping so if in this case i would do free shipping for the economy so I would factor in that $3 shipping charge into my product cost, right? So if you find a product for, uh, for $10, really it's 13. So we're gonna do 13 because we're factoring in the shipping cost, right? So we can do free shipping on Amazon. But then you can add expedited shipping and charge 16 or 17 or $20, right? You can charge whatever you want for expedited shipping, give that additional option to your customers and believe it or not, it's going to help you, one, make more money because you're going to be upcharging them on the shipping costs, right? It's 15 bucks from Source Universe. You're going to be able to charge a little bit more. So you're going to make more money every time someone places an order with expedited shipping. And then second of all is it gives the customers a secondary option. So if they want to get the item faster, generally when you order anywhere, expedited shipping always costs more. So it's not like you're... You know, it's it's a standard business practice, so you don't have to feel bad about it or anything. It's a it's a very good strategy. It's a great thing, um, and knowing that it's always going to be fifteen bucks from Source Universe. If you set yours up at say sixteen or seventeen ninety nine, you're always going to be making additional profits every time someone chooses that at checkout, right? So, sign up for the reseller agreement, and then you're just going to start listing products from them. So in this video, I'm going to do an original listing. This part of the video, um, I think I was actually looking at this thing right here. Oh no, I was actually looking at, let's go over to Amazon, see what I had, what I was searching. Okay, foot peel, that's what I was looking for. Um, okay, foot peel. So if we go back to Source Universe, there's a foot peel right here for 265 So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to scroll down. And this is, this is a foot peel. So it's a foot peel package. And... Restores your skin, smooth as jade, natural cotton, sock design, seamless fit, <clears throat> color is white. Okay, cool. So it's 265 Well, maybe there's other color options. Okay, just one color. So it's 265 and then we're going to add that $3 expedited shipping, or it's $3 uh, economy, so that's going to be 565 But then we're going to get 10% off after signing up as a reseller, right? 10% off site-wide when you sign up for the reseller agreement. So... Um, and generally, they accept every single person. They're they're very very dropship and reseller friendly. So it's going to be five sixty five. We're going to take away ten percent. That's going to take us down to about five dollars fifteen cents or five dollars ten cents. Then we're going to add Amazon seller fees. So before we add the seller fees, we got to see what's going on on Amazon with this product and if we can compete. So as you can see, if we're going to be paying around five bucks. We're actually in a really good place because a lot of these kits are well over 10 bucks. 10, 15, 18, 16, 18, 17, 13, 18, 10 bucks. So there's a lot of them that are, they're pretty much 10 to $20, right? 10 to $20. So if we're paying $5, let's say we just sell it for 10, the ultimate lowest price on Amazon, 10 bucks or even nine. 
right? So if we sell it for 10 bucks, Amazon fees are 15%, 15% of $10, a dollar 50. So we take our $5.10 total cost after adding shipping and taking our 10% discount, we're 510. We had a dollar 50 Amazon seller fees, right? Ballpark guesstimation. Then we're going to be looking at six dollars and sixty cents six dollars and seventy cents that's our total cost so if we want to make at least and with the original listing I always like to go for at least 20 percent profit with piggyback I always go for at least 10 right so if I want to go for at least 20 percent profit how much do I have to sell this product for to make at least 20 percent profit so if we're gonna pay six dollars and seventy cents after shipping and Amazon fees we need to sell it for at least eight somewhere around eight bucks that's gonna put us over 20 percent profit Right, and if you know, we just looked. All the all these are between ten and twenty dollars. So can we list this for eight or nine or ten dollars and be competitive? Yes, we can. We can definitely be competitive if we're listing it because that is actually some of the lowest prices on Amazon right now. So this nine dollar one is ranked five thousand. Then this fifteen dollar one thirty five thousand. Ten dollar ones thirteen thousand. Five thousand. So these sales ranks are really good. There's a lot of these products on here. Um, and a lot of them are doing extremely well, but price wise is so in this case when you see a lot of the products that are the same You want to do your own original listing Here's the best two best sellers are 3,000 and then 880 and the number one best seller Right number one best seller is 17 bucks for this foot peel Right 17 bucks. So can we list this for eight nine or ten dollars? Yes, I would probably actually start at maybe 1199 try to get it to sell at that point point. And if it doesn't, or it only sells a little bit, even if you run an Amazon PPC, um, then you can always drop your price. And Amazon actually likes that. If you can get a product to sell at a higher price, then all of a sudden you drop the price by like a pretty decent amount, like 10 or 20%. Amazon, some sometimes, they may or may not actually give you a free organic boost in ranking. Um, and I've seen this happen many, many times with my pro a lot of products. I do original listings. So this is another thing. Instead of doing Amazon FBA, Right, so right now we could be looking at Alibaba and we could tr be trying to source this product. We could try to send in a thousand units to Amazon and a thousand units. Let's say we pay, let's say Alibaba is, is, is 50 cents, right, instead of five bucks or whatever. 50 cents, then we're going to add shipping and we got to order a thousand units. We're looking at spending at least 500, a thousand, you know, a decent amount of money up front with no guarantee it's going to sell, right? You cannot guarantee that the product's going to sell. It doesn't matter how good you are at FBA. It doesn't matter how good you are at product research, keyword research. It doesn't matter. If you want to spend $10, $100 a day in, in, in Amazon PPC just to get the thing to rank, I mean, FBA is a really great way to go because it's a lot more hands-free, but it does require a lot more upfront capital and a lot more testing. And you can't really do too much testing without having the product in Amazon, right? So you have to spend money up front. And so what I like to do is I'll find a product from a supplier like Source Universe or Costway or even AliExpress US ship from locations, right? And do drop ship the item first, test its validity, see if you can get the product to sell, right? See if you can get the product to sell, see if you can get it ranked. And if you can, then maybe you want to go, okay, maybe I can now find this thing on Alibaba, send a thousand units to Amazon because it's already selling and it's already ranked and doing really well. So that means it's a guarantee your product will sell because you're already selling it via drop shipping. Now, a lot of the time, I will just list a product drop ship and an original listing like I'm doing right now with this uh, original listing from scratch, and I will never take it to FBA. As long as the supplier has it in stock, I will just keep drop shipping it, right? Even if it's 20 or 30% profit, but if I could source it from China, send in a thousand units, and I'd make 50% margin, I don't care. You know what I mean? Because to, to do that extra leg work and to send it all into FBA, I mean, if it's much easier just to keep drop shipping, because in that case, what you can do is you can continue to source new products, keep listing new products and scaling up your business, right? So you already got a product selling, and it's, and with Amazon FBA, generally, to get another product selling, you need more money up front. You have to go through the entire research process over again. You got to get test samples. You got to wait a two months to send it into Amazon. You got to do all this stuff, and there's no guarantee you're going to sell another product, right? No matter how good you are. So the best way to do it and the safest way to do it and the lowest cost, lowest risk is to drop ship first, right? Easiest way and most simple way to scale an Amazon business is to drop ship via piggybacking. So the first listing we did, 
listing an item that already exists on Amazon. That is called piggybacking or hijacking, whatever you want to call it. That is the most simple method to scaling an Amazon business. But when you're using suppliers like Walmart and, and, and Bed Bath and & Beyond, you don't really have the rights to resell these products. But if you use suppliers like Bangala, where they will give you a reseller agreement saying legally and legitimately you are allowed to resell their products, that safeguards you for selling on Amazon. You're actually allowed to sell the products. Like the ginger beer thing from Bangala that we listed a minute, five minutes ago, where I'm allowed to resell that because I'm a reseller for Bangala. Now, if I ever get a message from a brand like the ginger beer brand saying you're not allowed to resell our products, what they're doing is they're assuming I'm drop shipping from a supplier like Walmart, for example. So I'm not going to have a legitimate invoice and they're going to say stop listing our product or we'll report you to Amazon. And 90% of sellers that are doing their drop shipping are using retail suppliers. And the first thing they have to do is they got to delete the product or somehow come up with an invoice. Now, if you're using a good supplier like a wholesaler like Bangala, for example, and you get a message from a brand or a company, all you do is go to Bangala and send them the SKU. Say, here's the item in question. They're asking for a reseller agreement or if we're allowed to resell their products. And I've probably done this almost 20 times using Bangala in the last year. And every single time I have the company say, OK, thank you. And they leave me alone. Or occasionally you'll get a company who wants to control their own destiny on Amazon. So even though you're allowed to resell the uh, product from Bangala, that brand specifically, depending on the brand of the company, may not want you to resell their product on Amazon anyways, right? They might say, okay, well, you can sell our products on your own website, but we want to be the only ones to sell on Amazon. So even though you have an agreement with a wholesaler, it doesn't allow you to just resell any brand in the world because some brands like to control their own destiny. But for the most part, it adds a higher level of protection. It safeguards you. And anytime you ever get asked for an invoice from a legitimate supplier, you have them, right? So it's, 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 it's more difficult to scale a wholesale dropshipping business. It takes more time. Um, but that's why we have original listings. That's why you do this. And that's why this is the best way. Instead of doing Amazon FBA, or at least instead of doing Amazon FBA off the bat, Start by doing drop shipping and doing your own original listings. Now, you want to have an example of a successful Amazon store? My Amazon store has about 1,300 products, and they're a mixture of wholesale drop ship products, some of my own brand, and a lot of original listings drop ship from suppliers just like this. A lot of original listings, just like this foot peel that we, were, we would list for $8.99 or $11.99, a lot of those, and we're doing $6,000 to $10,000 a day in sales every day. On the Amazon US account, it's about four and a half years old, and that's the sales we're doing using just these methods, right? Just the methods I'm showing you in this video. So, and we have lots of students doing the same, doing, you know, doing really, really well with these. But the thing is about uh, wholesale and original listings is it takes longer, right? But the longest route possible is Amazon FBA, right? Especially if you have no experience and you don't have a lot of capital to buy products from China and source in like 500 or 1,000 units at a time. You want to scale an Amazon FBA business to $100,000 a month. It's going to take more time, way larger learning curve, more capital, more advertising expenses, potential losses, the, and the risk is greater, right? So even with the world's best Amazon FBA coach, like even if I was to teach you step-by-step -step every single thing there is for Amazon FBA, which we do have FBA in our Mastering Amazon course, but I always highly, highly suggest starting with dropshipping first. And if you want to do an Amazon FBA product, Find it from a supplier like these guys. Drop ship it first. See if the product will even sell or not. You know what I mean? Instead of buying a thousand units, let's say you got an item that's five dollars. So if you have to order a thousand unit minimum quantity from China of something that's five bucks, that's five thousand dollars. Then you're going to be paying probably a thousand dollars shipping and a bunch of other couple other fees. You're going to be looking at at least five six thousand dollars for a five dollar product from China. Order that in and send it to Amazon. And if that thing doesn't sell, or you can't get all of them to sell, or you can't get it to sell at the price point you originally wanted. I mean, it's a lot more of a difficult process. Now, over time, you can get really, really good at Amazon FBA. Um, but I always suggest, doesn't matter if you're new or you've been doing it a long time, drop ship the product first or merchant fulfilled, which is, you know, drop shipping is, instead of using Amazon to fulfill it, fulfill it yourself. The easiest way to fulfill something yourself, drop ship it. So you don't have to store any inventory, just like we're doing right here. So if I got an order for this product after listing it and I wanted to go place an order and ship it to my customer, I don't have to order it to my house. I don't have to. Only thing I have to do is come here, add to cart, 
And then what I'm going to do is take my Amazon customer shipping information and place that on the website or the supplier where I'm placing the order and have them ship it directly to my customer. That is drop shipping in a nutshell. So what I would do, the very next step I would do here for original listing is Unlike piggybacking, you don't have to do any keyword research. You don't have to create the actual listing. All you're doing is adding those few little things like the handling time, quantity, and setting your price. Now, doing an original listing, you have to find keywords. You have to craft the entire description. You have to get good images. Now, a good thing about a supplier like this is you usually have some really nice images, and you can just take them and use them. Um, since you're allowed to resell their products, they will just let you, right? So you can got to do your images, got to do the description, got to do some keyword research. Um, and we go over all that in a different video, so I'm not going to do it in this video. Um, but this is the way you want to do it. So that's about it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next week.